plasma tank plasma tank plasma tank nice so for part two we're going to go into more of the circuitry and the wiring a lot of this is just going to be the turret with the main plasma and the back coil first step here is i'm cutting out some strip board this is some circuit board with just strips of uh, copper traces on the top that i'm going to solder leds to once i have the strip board to length and size it's off to the microscope so here's what i got i need to do three of these each with three LEDs, all in series. You can tell by the little corner cuts there, they're all going the same direction. So I've tacked them on one side and then I'm coming back and I'm soldering these to the other side. And now that those are soldered well on that side, I come back and finish the tack off into a decent solder joint. And the most important step, make sure you test everything. So now I've soldered some wires to these and now I've got to fit them into the main coil. Unfortunately, a lot of this is the back of my head. I'm sorry about that, but sometimes you just don't remember where you put your camera. And that brings us to another little test to make sure that everything's working well before we get into the actual wiring. So I think this is gonna be a lot easier to understand if I just do everything in Tinkercad so you can actually see the layout. So I'm just gonna go through and set it up on a breadboard here in Tinkercad, and hopefully this will make a little bit more sense than me just doing everything with just a pile of wires on a table. So this is the basic layout for just the turret. So the two sets of three LEDs on the left here, that's gonna be the main coils, and the other set of three is the back coil that's on there. This other LED that I'm adding here, that's gonna go ahead and be our flash or the firing LED. And here's where it gets interesting. I'm actually gonna use transistors. This will give me current control, as well as allow me to run straight from the battery. If you look at the main coil here, I'm running three in parallel, twice in series. So that's gonna give me a forward voltage of six because they're actually white LEDs that use three for their forward voltage with two in series will give me the six, but because each of them are set in parallels of three, that means that they're gonna take 60 milliamps and that is too much voltage and too much power for the Arduino. So I'm running it through a transistor as a switch to be able to actually run this off the Arduino. So we're working on the finishing touches with just the wiring here. So the gray is gonna be for the rear coil and the green is gonna be for the main plasma coil of the tank. Now, both of these need to get connected to an Arduino to actually make a little bit more sense. Tinkercad only has the Arduino Uno, which is not the Arduino that I'm actually gonna use, but for the prototype, this is totally gonna to work. I'm gonna throw a nine volt battery in here to represent the actual batteries that I'm gonna use. It's not exactly nine volt, but it's pretty close to eight volt and one volt really is not gonna make a huge difference considering LEDs don't really care about voltage as long as you have enough to get past their forward voltage. What's important to remember here, because I'm using two different power sources and I'm using the transistor to switch on and off between the other power source, is I need to make sure that I tie the grounds of the Arduino and the nine volt together, otherwise the transistors aren't gonna work at all. And here we have the completed circuit for the turret. Green is for the main coils, gray is for the back coil, and the teal goes straight to the flash for the main gun's firing. In all cases on this, red is positive and black is negative. This may come as a huge shocker, but I'm a giant nerd and I love spreadsheets. So we have all of the different wire colors hanging out right here. So I know when it's coming out of the bottom of the tank is a giant pile of Cthulhu wires. I know what goes where. This is also going to calculate out what I need for the transistor. This is my transistor type, and this is my gain. Again, check out my transistor video. That'll explain a lot more of this. I don't have time in this video. Pin type is important because not all pins are the same on an Arduino. Sometimes you have an output pin, sometimes you have an input pin, and then you have PMW, which should totally be PWM. But apparently, I decided to go with pulse myth modulation. So what is pulse width modulation? Well, in my Lehman Russ video, we talked about digital write and how that can turn a pin on or off. It's pretty simple. You write digital write in your code, you write what pin number you want, and you write high or you write low, depending on if you want it on or off. With a pin that's capable of pulse width modulation, you can use analog write. 
This will turn the pin on and off at a very rapid rate, which will make an LED look dimmer or brighter depending on how fast it's on. This can vary between zero, which is off, to 255, which is basically solid on. So for an example, if I go down here, if I were to do digital write, I would have to put in the pin number, say five, and then I have to do high. That'll turn it on. Now, if I wanted to do something different, I could do analog write. We'll go with pin five again here. And I'm gonna put in 125, which will give me roughly a half the brightness that the LED has the capability of. So here I am pushing all of the wires through the hole to get this whole turret apparatus in here. Inside of this has both of the transistors and all the resistors that are needed for this system. So I just have to plug these into the Arduino. All right, let's go over the code. There's definitely people out there who can code better than me, but this is how I did it. And this is how I made the plasma tank. So there's a ton of variables that I ended up setting up for this. The big key ones here that I wanna point out is the plasma values. This is the maximum fire value that I put in, the maximum pulse value that I put in, the minimum value that I put in. So this will pulse between 50 and 100, and 100 again is roughly half the brightness, and then I went up to 250. I could put 255 in here, but I left that five as a buffer just in case, because if you put 256, you'll actually end up turning it off if you don't have anything protecting that. And that brings us down to the pulsing. This is how I wrote the code to make it pulse. Of course, we're checking our interval first, and then we're gonna go ahead and check if we're at max. If we're at max, then we're gonna change the toggle to zero and subtract one from it. If we're not at max, then we're gonna check the toggle. So if the toggle is at one, we're gonna to add to it. If it's zero, we're gonna to subtract to it. So because if it's at max, it turns the toggle to zero, it'll subtract one, and the next time it runs through this program, it'll subtract another one. Now, if it gets to the minimum value here, then we're gonna change the toggle to one and add one to it. This way, the plasma coil will dance between the lowest value and the highest value and just add one or subtract one to go up and down through that. At the bottom here, of course, I have digital write to make sure everything's good. But I want to point out here, I specifically digital write the main firing LED to low every single time just to make sure nothing weird happens and it doesn't end up remaining on for whatever reason. Now we go up to the firing function for the plasma. Again, I'm using a toggle here effectively for the plasma main, and this will be set to one in the fire function like I did with the Lehman Russ. And because that's on, it'll go through its firing sequence. And that's how I can get it to fire twice by one press of the button. So as I go through here, we have the same function here where we're checking for our interval. We're checking for a flash state, and this will toggle the front cannon light on and off. We are going to go ahead, this is super important, and set the start value for when it fires. If you don't set the start value, then you're gonna start from a random value from the variation of pulsing. And depending on what value that is, it's gonna take longer or shorter to actually fire the cannon. Now I have my soundboard timed to these firing sequences. So if I have a random firing sequence, my sounds aren't gonna line up with the lights. And that really, really makes the effect not as cool. So as we come through here, after we've set it to the fire start value, it comes down to this section right here where we're taking the value and adding one to it. We're gonna add one to it all the way until it gets to the maximum value. Once it gets to the maximum value, we're gonna go ahead and turn our front LED on to make it look like it's firing. Then we're gonna wait for a bit, and then we're gonna start fading back down. And once all of this is completed, we go back to the plasma pulse, and I've put this in this function as well, just to make sure that this happens. And that's one of the big reasons I also, if we scroll down, have the digital write low to the main Canon flash. This way, I have a double fail safe that that will get turned off. So it doesn't remain on because sometimes you skip through a function and something weird happens and some LEDs on that you don't want on. All right, so I've taken the Tinkercad, I've added all of the different LEDs that I have in here, I've added the code in, I've changed the color of all of the wires to match exactly what I had in my spreadsheet, 
and let's run the code and see what happens. So everything's turning on that should turn on, which is a good sign. I always like when that happens. And I press the button here, and as you can see, it's going to go through my fire sequence here. We have the little plasma cannons firing, the big plasma cannon firing, and the LAS cannon fired there a while ago. We'll run through it one more time, make sure everything's good. Now you might notice little uh, exclamation marks here on the LEDs. That means that they're blowing out, but I'm not too concerned about fake LEDs. And that brings us back around to why we did all this. Well, this video might have been a little bit dry, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.